Welcome back to another video, my brothers. Today's video is titled, Stop Chasing Success. Now, I know you guys are thinking, huh? Stop chasing success. What's wrong with Ali? Is he okay? Someone help him. I'm going to give you a paradigm shift in today's video, which I learned a few years ago, which just changed the game for me. Late in my teens, early in my 20s, I used to think success was something that you pursued, something that you chased, until I remember watching a seminar by Jim Rohn. It was recorded in the 80s, I think it was 1981, where he says, success is not something you chase. It's not something you pursue, it's something you attract. Now I know a lot of you guys are probably thinking, oh, here he comes with the fluff, with the rah-rah, attract, law of attraction. No, what he means by attract is you become more valuable to the marketplace because how much you're earning right now isn't predicated solely on your time. It is predicated on your value to the marketplace. You might find two guys, same age, 24, 25. One is making three grand a month. One is making one grand a month. Now you might be thinking, hang on a second, how does that work out? They're both the same age. They both have the same time in the day. How's one making triple or twice as much as the other? The value. That's why one is contributing more to the marketplace than the other. Now we're speaking economically here. We're not speaking as a person, whether he's a good person or not. One is just contributing more. And look, having a degree isn't the only way of becoming valuable to the marketplace, but you have to look inwards. You have to ask yourself the questions. Hang on a second. I'm currently making eight pound or nine pound an hour. That means I'm not really bringing that much value to the marketplace. Now, if I could find a way to become more valuable, maybe by taking some courses on public speaking or this or that, or maybe by learning a new skill, I could demand more economically speaking. And that's right, you can. Value is the key component. And that's what I want you guys to focus on. How can I become more valuable to the marketplace? Okay, Jim Rohn says something fascinating or said something fascinating in the seminar. He said, income does not far exceed personal development. It may make a lucky jump, but sure enough, if you don't go to it, if you don't catch up to it, it will come back right where you are. And that's why people that win the lottery tend to lose all their money. Statistically speaking, they don't tend to do very well with their money. Yes, there are the exceptions, but most people that win the lottery blow the money because they haven't created value in the marketplace. They've come across a huge amount of money and they don't know how to essentially make it work for them. Jim says, um, if someone gives you a million dollars, best you become a millionaire quickly because sure enough, if you don't, you're going to lose the money. It's going to disappear. And that's very true. When I first heard that, I was like, hang on a second. So if someone gives me a million, I should hurry up and make a million. And then I was like, yeah, of course. Because if I don't know how to make a million off that million, I'm sure enough going to lose the money. He also says, if you take all the money in the world and divide it equally amongst everyone, it will soon find its way back in the same pockets. Isn't that fascinating? And that's true. You know, I was, I was butt hurt in my early 20s, right? Before I really understood the whole concept of becoming more valuable, I was just thinking to myself, you know, I'm older than this guy. You know, I've been around longer than him. How is he making more than me? Because I used to think about things from the perspective of time. You know, we both put in a good nine hour shift. How is he, right? Or I'd see people that I, I work in the same company at, but they're younger than me and they're making more. And then I realized, hmm, they are bringing more value than I am, which is why they're getting paid more than I am. I could be older, but that doesn't fucking matter. What matters is the value that they bring to the marketplace. These big YouTubers that you see, a lot of them with hundreds of thousands of subscribers, some of them with 80,000, but they're providing value. And that's why they're making a great amount of money. People that are excellent in painting art, you might be thinking, a hundred grand per painting, how value. The marketplace looks at these people and thinks, wow, 
they surely are bringing a tremendous amount of value. One of my favorite artists, his name is Fabian Perez. He can demand a lot of money for his paintings because he is world-class at painting. He truly is. Shout out to Fabian Perez, right? Someone might think, hang on a second, that, that took him one or two months. How is he selling it for 40 grand? 50 grand, I don't make that in a year. Once again, they're thinking from the perspective of time. I work 12 months a year, uh, uh, 40, 50 hours a week, and I get paid less than he, he does. And he paints one painting and it took him two months or a month or whatever it is. And that's how they're thinking. And that's a flawed mentality. I want you to sit down and think to yourself, right, this is how much I'm making right now. What am I doing to become more valuable to the marketplace? What can I do? Let's say you're not doing much right now. And I don't care how fucking old you are, 18, 19, 20, I don't give a shit. I don't care if you're 40 either. I want you to sit there and ask yourself, what can I do? To bring more valuable, uh, to bring more value to the marketplace. Ask yourself that question, because that's a growth question. That gets you thinking. Hmm, what can I do? It gets you to think resourcefully, right? A victim mindset would be, oh, you know, but I don't have a degree. I don't have a qualification. I can't exactly be a surgeon and earn that amount of money. Yes, you can. Now, yes, you may not go to medical school and take a degree in medicine and all these other degrees that you need to become a surgeon, but you could become valuable in the industry that you have a passion in. You absolutely can. You can, or you can start making videos on toys. I mean, there's a kid on YouTube that makes millions of dollars a year reviewing toys. He is bringing his own value. He's got an audience. He's got people, mainly kids, of course, and parents that want to buy things for their kids. And he's providing them value. And so he's demanding that money, right? A CEO that's employed by a company to help them grow. He may come in and do a tremendous job and helps the company grow by a billion dollars in a year. And his salary may be 40 million, 50 million. Now, some people think no man deserves to earn 40 million. Well, a billion and his cut was 40 million or 50 million. I would say that, in fact, he's probably been undercompensated, right? But that's how much some CEOs make, tens of millions of dollars. But they're bringing billions of dollars worth of value. Of course, they have their own team and everything, but I mean, some people are tremendous at what they do. So they can demand a wage that high. They can demand compensation that high. Someone might say, hey, to meet me, it's $10,000 an hour. The average person would think 10,000. Mate, I make that in a year or I make that in six months. What do you mean 10,000 for one hour? Well, that person may be in such demand. Thousands of people want his time and his time is so valuable. He may make more than $20,000 in one given hour. And so for him to remove one hour and spend time with you, it's gotta be worth it. Guys, nothing is free. You gotta exchange value. Stop being fucking entitled. Stop thinking, oh, I've started a YouTube channel. Why isn't everyone subscribing? Why don't I have a million? And you haven't even fucking uploaded one video yet. Or you open a business. You sold two products. It could be shirts or it could be, you know, anything, man. Fucking food. It could be anything, right? And you might be thinking, well, why isn't everyone improve, get better? Why should you be the one to win? Just because you feel like it. No, you feel like you deserve it. Absolutely not. It's not about your feelings. Fuck your feelings, man. It's about value. If I'm not providing enough value, I don't deserve to be paid the money I want to be paid. Harsh, but that's fucking truth. I need to get better. I need to improve. You've got to be self-critical, gentlemen. You've got to look at yourself and be like, right, I'm not happy with this, this or that. If I am to demand the money that I'm going to be demanding in the future. I need to be someone who is valuable. And like I said, it doesn't matter what fucking industry you're in. There's a market for you. You need to just be able to understand that market and then aim to deliver as much value as you can. All right, so the word value, I want you to take this and embed it in your thick skull. Because I had to. I was like, oh, well, I'll get paid. We're working the same amount of hours. That was me back in my days 
of faulty thinking. The old Ali that didn't know any better. And then I realized, you know what? I need to genuinely become world-class at what it is that I want to do. I can't be entitled. I can't sit there and be like, bring me the money. No, I need to deliver value to the people. Right, and as Jim Rohn says, service to many leads to greatness. Right, if you want to be compensated in abundance, you need to be providing value in abundance. Okay, so I hope this video helps you. If it does, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button down below. Keep providing value, gentlemen, and whatever it is, whether you're a PT, provide value. A nutritionist, provide value. Someone who te teaches trading, provide value. Someone who does therapy online to people, provide value to those people, whatever it may be. Okay, keep providing value. Catch you in the next video. Peace.